Hi guys, Jennifer here. Welcome back to my channel. I have a few little Christmas projects that I had started and I never did get to finish. So I'm trying to finish those up before the end of the year, hopefully. And so I just wanted to show you that I had picked up these gorgeous IOD um, molds. I have a ton of them and they're really addicting but they came out with these beautiful Christmas ones this year and they're just really gorgeous. So I picked those up and I was creating some either tags or ornaments. You can use them for whatever you wish and uh, I made them with the, with the molds. So aren't they beautiful? I just love how the molds turned out. Uh, this was one that I had already in my stash and I made one with that. Now, what I used for this are these, uh, they're coasters, really thin coasters. I'll leave the link to them below if you're interested. Uh, picked them up on Amazon and they come in this like natural color. So they're like a probably like a medium weight chipboard type thing. And so I wanted to create one with you. I'll show you what I did. So I added this little charm dangle, it's a Tim Holtz and then a little bell and then some crinkled up muslin there. And this one, I used one of the charms, uh, Tim Holtz charms, a little crinkled seam binding and then the pretty snowflake one. I wanted to stamp the background on them. So I have this um, Stampendous stamp and it is a Christmas background stamp. Really pretty. And Cling Christmas background is the name of it. I'm not sure if you can get that. I've had that for quite a while. So I I stamped using the Versafine because it's for watercolor. And uh, first I gessoed it and then I stamped it. So here's the difference. And then for the mold, I actually used glue because I just was kind of being lazy. So I did three different trees and I wanted to use them on one of these so you can see that after you gesso the trees you know you can see them much better but they kind of look clear right now so i thought i would do that and decorate one of these with you you can you know arrange these how you want the other one i was going to do is the little poinsettia and then i was going to put that there so that would be pretty too. There's so many pieces um, in the molds that you can make different backgrounds there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this on and then I'm gonna gesso the trees and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I did a wash of gesso over the leaves and then after they dried, I glued them on. So they should be almost glued, dried here. And then I'm going to go ahead and do another coat of gesso over the top, over the entire thing. And then I'll be back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I have done a little wash of gesso, another little coat on top, and this should be all dry. So you can kind of see the difference before I gessoed and then after. Okay, and then so what we're going to do to get this is do a little wash. So I have in my stash this um, acrylic paint. It's a burnt umber. So I'm just going to... I have this because my son was taking an art class and he had to do some painting. And uh, he doesn't uh, really 
think that's all I need. He doesn't really paint, so I'm gonna just add a little bit of water. And then mix it around. You want it pretty liquidy because you just want it to. Now you can, if you don't have paints, whoops. I'm gonna move this before I run that. If you don't have paints, you can use your sprays, your Lindy sprays. You can use your distress crayons. You know, use what you have in in your stash because. No reason to buy anything. All right, let's see how this looks. So before I was using one of my sprays, my Prima sprays, I do like it. It's the antique gold and it has that little gold sheen on it. But we're just gonna wash this over the top. And we're going to get in there in the nooks and crannies because this is where it's going to pick up all that detail. Okay. Sorry. You can do the back too. I uh, I probably I'm not sure what I'm gonna do back there, but so now I want to take off some of the excess. Let me get a paper towel. It just takes off some of this excess. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. And you can add more if you want or take away some more. Okay. Now I'm going to dry that lightly because you don't want to dry it too much with the heat gun because this is glue. <laughs> and if you're going to use clay, then you shouldn't have a problem. I'll be right back with that. I'm going to dry that up and then I'll be right back. Okay, we're all dry. This is how this step looks. And then you can take for the last step, you can take either your gesso or you can take um, like a chalk paint. Have some pretty chalk paint. You can put that over top. You can do, it depends on like what color you want. I, I have this pink. I think on one of these, this one, I did the pink first and then I did the wash and then I did gesso. So it comes out a little bit more of a pinky brown. I don't know if you can tell the difference. It's very subtle. And this is with just the gesso and the wash and then the gesso on top again and I did add some glitter some stickles I don't know if you can see that but it's very subtle just because I needed a little bit of sparkle let's do a little bit of this pink I think maybe let's just try it okay So you're just gonna kind of go over the top like that. I'm doing this down because you want all the crevices in between to 
still have that dark brownish tint or whatever, just so you can emphasize some of that. Here. You barely need any paint, so. This looks so cool, and then you can get some of the background as well. Just kind of giving like a kind of like a dry brush over the top. If you add too much paint, you're gonna just cover all the, the work that you did. So that looks so cool. I just love the way that looks. So now I'm going to let that dry and you could go over it one more time with the gesso if you want. I'm just going to dry this real quick. I just think that looks amazing. Okay, let's just do a quick touch of the gesso over this. And if you need to, you know, you can just use a napkin or something to get some of that off of there. I just kind of rub it my fingers. really digging how this looks you guys so cute okay so that is pretty much it and you can go over again if you want more highlights with the white you can go over the top but i think i'm gonna leave it right there and i'll punch a hole at the top and add some seam binding so i'm gonna go ahead and do this one off camera and I will be back to show you my finished ornaments. All right. Hi guys, I'm back to show you how I finished the projects. Um, this is the one that we worked on in the last video or the last segment and this is the final outcome. Isn't it so cute? So after I finished um, showing you the pink and the gesso and everything, I went back and I used, I used some of these stickles, the pink taffeta and the stardust. And I made little tiny bits of with the pink on the leaves of, or I, whatever these wispy parts of the tree. And then I use the stardust just all around the tree, little tiny bit. So I just took it off and I just kind of went over the top. And if I push too much out, I just kind of rubbed it to mix it in there. I think that turned out so cute. I just added some crinkled seam binding and a little bit of tool and then a little bell there. I thought maybe I could add some stickles around the edge. Um, you could cut these off if you don't like them sticking around the circle, but I kind of like them hanging off. And I think that turned out really cute. And then this is the one with the poinsettia.
I didn't use pink paint on that one. I just used the gesso over the top. So as you can kind of see the difference, I think I do like the pink on it. It looks really pretty. But I just did this one and then in the center, I used the pink taffeta stickles and then to make those berries as well. And then along the top, I added the stardust stickles again. And I'm thinking um, Anna White, she uh, is here on YouTube. She has this spray glitter. That would look so pretty on this. So you could do that too, because I feel like the background would look so pretty with the spray glitter. So I might invest in some of that. You could also add some snow with the snow text or the snowflake paste. And then of course you guys saw these. These I did gesso quite a bit, so you can kind of see the difference. And then I do like how this one looks with the stamping in the background. I think it adds such an awesome touch. Another layer, which I think was really needed. So I have some other ideas with these, but I just thought I would share what I made with you and maybe give you a little bit of... Um, an idea what to do with your molds. I know that at one point, you know, I was collecting them and there's some that Frank Garcia has. I would love to use that, those as well. So yeah, I'll be making some more stuff with some molds here in the near future. I hope you enjoyed this little project and thanks so much for joining me. I'll be back soon. Bye for now.